Good morning, Mom. Good morning, Grandma Dorothy. Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, March 10th, and this is your daily nugget. <laughs> I uh, did my little walk and talk at 5 a.m. this morning with God around Capitol Lake. Had a great time. Just kind of putting it out there for him and just having a conversation, and I'm just learning how to do that. And uh, uh, gosh, it's really made a difference. Really made a difference. Um, we're going to start out right off the bat with uh, mom's positive confession this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad in it the rest of my life is the best of my life God's favor surrounds me like a shield out with the old in with the new these hands are anointed to prosper God has not given me a spirit of fear but of power love and a sound mind thank you father for giving me the desires of my heart and establishing my plans I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If God be for me, who then can be against me? Yea, God. Father, I just ask you uh, to bless this uh, devotional today. Uh, bless the day. Bless our pastors in the churches that we attend. Uh, Father, thank you for health. Thank you that um, we can come and enjoy being around you, being with you. Uh, getting into your word and that you are a God of provision Lord you have thought of everything I thank you for that in Jesus name Amen. okay so Joseph Prince is destined to reign destined to reign Joseph Prince anyway uh, he says I will be your God Hebrews 8 10 and I will be their God and they will, shall be my people when God says I will be your God that that's a declaration that he will work miracles in your life. So if it is a miracle you need, it's a miracle you will get. If there's a huge sea blocking the way to your blessing and God says, I will be your God, it means that he will open the sea for you so that you can receive your blessing. If you're poor and God says, I will be your God, it means that you will be well provided for. Since God fed nearly three million Israelites, Israelites in the wilderness every single day for 40 years you can be sure that God will provide for you too. If you are sick and God says I will be your God it means that he is going to be the Lord who heals you Exodus 15 26 and you will be healthy. If you have incurred a huge debt and God says I will be your God it means that he will bring about a supernatural cancellation of your debt. But not only did God say, I will be their God, he said, he also said, they shall be my people. To be God's people means to be the protected ones. Not all, not all on earth are God's people, only we who are redeemed by the blood of Christ. During times of uncertainties, God says to you, you shall be my people. This means that you are protected from all pestilences, plagues, attacks, and destruction. Simple as that, folks. Even when you hear people say that the economic crisis is coming, God says you, to you, you shall be my people. This means that you don't have to worry or be anxious. The crisis will not affect you regardless of the situation in the world. You are protected and you will walk in the blessings of God. God's power comes into every challenge you face. When he says to you, I will be your God and you shall be my people, you will experience the supernatural life. Your part is to believe what he declares and act like it is so. Uh, thought for the day, God's power comes into every challenge you face because he says that he is your God and you are his people. We serve a good God, folks. We do serve a good God. He has made provision after provision after provision. He just loves us. He just loves us, and he loves us being free and relying on him and, and all of that. It's just awesome. Ain't no other God like that. <laughs> okay, so a spirit blessing today. This is a good one. Uh, day 14, I bless you with favor in your walk. Spirit, I bless you with people who will believe in you who will help make you successful, who will be encouraging and life-giving to you, who will propel you along in life. 
I bless you with people who will make the road smooth before you and find ways to serve you and invest in you and bless you with time, attention, resources, and practical assistance. Provisions, folks, provisions. I bless you with favor, with authorities and favor in the marketplace. Oh, pastor. We've been talking about that, haven't we? I bless you with favor even with people who are enemies of Christ and the cross. I bless you in the name of the one who shines the light of his countenance upon you. Ooh, wow. Pastor's been talking about that. Having favor in the marketplaces and with the authorities and all that. I'm telling you. Uh, okay, now in the name's God... We just gonna go up here to day 14. I bless you in the name of the faithful God. Spirit, I bless you with the experiencing God's faithfulness in your relationships. I bless you with knowing his faithfulness in financial and material provisions. I bless you with not just being comfortable, but seeing provisions come from the hand of God. I bless you with seeing his faithfulness in giving you insight understanding verses and experiences just before you need to share them with someone else. I bless you with having the joy of imparting your life message of faithfulness to the next generation and the generation after that. Woo boy, I bet you Dave Minton, if he hears this, I bet you like I bet you like that one, huh? That was that's right along with everything you've been trying to teach us and tell us here lately. Um, you know, I just got a little um I was talking to my mom about, we were talking about uh, God's favor, how, you know, and of course it's in our, our uh, daily positive confession, God favor surrounds us like a shield. And I've just had little glimpses here and there and, and uh, I've been like, and I'll just share them a couple of w with you. I was getting on the bus the other day and this is, you know, there's just little things, but it's favor, favors, it favors, favor. You know, that's the way I look at it. <laughs> But uh, I got on the bus and I didn't have my bus pass. My uh, that gives me a discount on the on the bus ride. And uh, usually, I mean, I've ridden the bus quite a lot, and they're real sticklers about all that stuff. You know, they they want the money for the ride. You know, trust me. And uh, I got on there and I didn't have it. I had my Bible under my arm, you know, and I was I was on my way to church and and. Uh, I didn't have the full fare without my bus pass. And um, this guy just, oh, don't worry about it, sir. Don't worry about it, sir. And so he <laughs> called me sir, number one, <laughs> which is really strange for me. I don't know. I don't I don't recall anybody in the, my, you know, recently that addresses me as sir. But uh, but anyway, he's just like, oh, don't worry about it. Here's, you know, and gave me the transfer, the whole nine yards, you know, but. But boy, they, they're sticklers on that, you know. So I just looked at that as like favor. Then I was at the store yesterday, you know. Maybe it ain't no big thing to you guys, but, you know, I'm just sharing it just because I think it's kind of cool. Then I'm at the store yesterday. Um, I'm down at the bus depot, uh, the Olympia Transit Center yesterday, and I slip out because I got six minutes wait. Slip off the bus to go get me some... Uh, Ben and Jerry's uh, chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream on my way to church. And um, all I had was a $5 bill. And I've never paid more than, you know, just under five bucks for, you know, a little pint of that ice cream anywhere before. But I went in there and it was $5.99. And once again, I had my Bible under my arm. And uh, when he said $5.99, I looked at him and I said, uh, I think I just got five bucks. Oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You know, so it's like, I just thought that was really kind of cool. So then once again, on the way home from church, my mom and I were talking about uh, the favor of God. And I get home, I get in the shower and get out of the shower. Apparently I'd left my Facebook on, but there was a little window open. Uh, Wendy, Wendy, uh, uh, Nick Saran's wife, Wendy, uh, had put up a little window there that, uh, that said, uh, if you want a home cooked meal, you better, you know, it said going once, going twice, after eight o'clock, the offer's over. And it was like 8.15. I was like tortured by that. You know, I was like, 
And uh, so I typed in, I said, oh, man, you really know how to hurt a brother, you know, with no transportation. So what did she do? She had her husband bring me dinner last night, just out of the blue like that. I was like, I called my mom up. I said, can you believe that? Favor, favor, favor. You know, I got to get me one of them wives or something one of these days. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's your Sunday nugget. Just had to share a couple thoughts with you. Um, go to church. Bless your pastor. Bless your God. Bless the people around you. Stay away from the burning buildings and get around folks. I mean, you know, it's hard to get around folks that ain't friends to your destiny when you're hanging out with church folks. But you know what I'm saying. God bless you, and I love you. Bye-bye.